So the first thing to notice here is that we have two different arrangements for this operation. We can do them horizontally or vertically. I think it's fair to say the horizontal arrangement is the traditional one. It's certainly the one that I learned at school. Um, the vertical one I'm seeing show up in textbooks and different places, so um, it's clearly being being accepted by more and more teachers. So, but it tends to be the newer one. Uh, so, I'm going to show both. And the worksheets that you'll see attached to this video um, use both arrangements. So, one worksheet will be in horizontal format, and the next one will be in vertical, and so on. So, looking at addition. Here we have 5, 6 and 2, 6 and we're going to add them together. Not a terribly difficult question, of course. So, we're adding 6. Now, we could say to our students, 5, 6 and 2, 6 is a bit like adding 5 apples and 2 apples. I've used that as a, a, a way of helping the students see that the word 6 is the name of the type of thing that we're adding together which is not a bad way of seeing it. It also helps link to the idea of denominator, which gives a fraction its name. That's what denominator really means. So however we do it, we're going to explain to students that this is in sixths, and the answer will be a number of six. Of course, we should use diagrams to help the students. So early on especially, we want our students to be able to see that six. That's not a very good diagram, but um, six are like that. We will shade in five, six on one shape, two on another. Of course, the circles must be the same size so that we can add them together. We can see that will make seven. I'm running out of space here. So students should see easily that that will take up an entire hole plus another one. None of this is terribly difficult. So we would initially want the students to say that that is seven sixths, and of course, when they're ready for mixed numbers and improper fractions, they should be able to convert that into one and one sixth. Let's look at the vertical arrangement. Now, the vertical arrangement has a number of advantages over the horizontal arrangement, one of which is the fact that it's consistent with our algorithm for adding whole numbers. So we're used to adding them vertically. Uh, when they're whole numbers, we can do the same thing here um, with some modifications for common fractions. So again, we're going to explain to our students that we have ninths. So the answer will be in ninths. So we'll write that down first. How many ninths do we have here? How many ninths there? Six plus four is a simple number fact. That's 10. Now here we have another option. Um, I found not everybody likes this. Not everybody is ready to do it this way. But I'd like to recommend that, especially for um, more able students, the more advanced students, I suppose, that instead of quickly writing the 10 down and then converting it into a, a mixed number, we could say to our students, before we go any further, do we have enough to make up a whole? A bit like we do with adding whole numbers. Do we have enough of these to make 10? So we can make one in the next column. In this case, we're saying, do we have enough to make nine to make a whole? Of course we do. So we can put if you like, a one in the holes place, so we can write the one down here straight away. And of course, there's going to be one ninth left over. So that's an option. It's certainly not necessary. You don't have to do it that way. And students may find it easier to just straight away write down 10 ninths. And then we can write it over on this side, one and one ninth. All right.